Hi. In this video, we're going to look at how you can work with numbers in deep test and how you can use variables in your cases. I'm going to use a very simple example on my local computer as basis for the video. We're just going to read the amount of free disk space on my hard drive. In this case, I have 105 gigabyte free. First, I want to read the amount of free space on the hard disk and I'll use a get number building block for this purpose. If I just run this simple test case, it will search the entire screen and return whatever number it found. This takes way too long and it's not accurate enough, so we can do three things to ensure we get the right amount of free disk space returned from the building block. The first one is to add a format which tells the building block to search for a text that exists only in the context of this defined format. In this case, we will add gigabyte free after the number token. So now the building block will search the screen for a number that is located in front of the text gigabyte free. Let's try to run the case. And it found the number 105 correctly. The second way to ensure we find the right number is to define an area to search for a number in. If I right click the area field, I can capture an area where I know that the number will be in. As you can see, I captured an area that included other numbers which could affect finding the correct number. This leads me directly to the third way of ensuring that we read the right number, the combination of using an area and a format. Using both an area and a format optimizes speed and accuracy and is definitely an example of best practices. To illustrate what we can do with the numbers, I'm just going to capture the total disk space and I will do a comparison of the two numbers found. I should never have more free disk space than the total size of my hard drive. So let's test that. I'll add a new get number after the first block and add both an area and a format as we did previously. I can actually reuse the defined area by just dragging the area property from one get number to the other get number. In the format, I'm going to specify the word of before and the word gigabyte after. This should give us the total disk space. Now I add a compare block and add the found numbers in as value A and value B. In this case, I would like to make sure that the free disk space is less than the total size, so I select the method less than. If number A is less than number B, then the top connector will be triggered and we can add a pass block. If it's not true, then it will trigger the incorrect connector and we can add a fail block. Let's run the test case. The test case passed, so I don't have more free space than my total disk space. The next thing we will look into is variables. What I would like to test is that the amount of free disk space on my disk between each run of the test case has not decreased by more than 20%. So if I had 100 gigabytes free, I can accept that it falls to 80 gigabyte between two runs of the test case. But if it decreases more, the test case should fail. I'll create a new test case for this purpose. Free space monitor. And I'm gonna add a get number block and I'm going to get the amount of free disk space the same way as we did before. So capturing an area and setting the format gigabyte free. When we work with variables, there are two building blocks that we can use. Get variable and set variable. We're going to start by adding a set variable after the get number. In this building block, you can add a name to the variable. In this case, we will call it free gigabyte. 
The second field is the value field, where you can add the value to the variable, and we will connect the found number with the value field, like this. If I expand the set variable building block, we get the option of selecting the scope of the variable. The variable can exist in three different scopes, which all decides how long the variable should live. If I select only this case, the variable will only be available while this test case runs. If I select all cases in this run, the variable will exist for the duration of a set of test cases executed in a schedule. In this case, we select permanent, which means that the variable should live forever and be accessible from any run of this test case. If we run the test case now, we should see that the amount of disk space is added to the new variable. Let's run the case. As we can see in the log, the number, which is 105, was added to the new variable. To read the value, I use a get variable block and use the same variable name and type as before. I'm just going to move the two other blocks and add a pass block and a get variable block. I'm going to add in the same name as we used before and I'm going to set the type to permanent to match the settings on the set variable. The result value from the get variable is then passed into the pass building block. If we run the test case now, we should see the value set in the set variable 105 being read with the get variable and added into the pass building block. 105. As we can see, the value was correctly read from the permanent variable. So with this concept in place, we can now construct a real case. I'm just going to clean up a bit here. I'll start by reading the current amount of free disk space by using the get number. And then I'll add a compare block. The first value is the current value, and the second value is the value of the variable multiplied by 0 0.8, like this. I'll add a calculate block and multiply the value from the last run with 0 0.8 and add the result number to the compare block. Like this, I'm going to set the calculation method to multiplication and wire the result number into value B. I'll change the comparison method to greater than. If the new value is larger than 80% of the saved value, we're all good to go and the top connector is triggered. We we'll then use the set variable to update the value in the variable with the new value, like this, and then we're going to end with the pass block. If the new value is below 80% of the old value, then the amount of free disk space decreases too fast and we will fail the test case, like this. One last thing. The first time you run the test case, the variable is not set so we will use the newest red value as the default value for the get variable block. Like this. We are now ready to run the test case. The case passed and we can see that the value 105 was compared to 84.0. To make a little cleaner, we can change the calculate block to return a whole number. We can do this by checking the round result and specify zero decimals. So let's try to run it again. As we can see now, the result of the 80% is now 84 as a clean number that is compared to 105. And again, the case is passed. These two test cases were examples of how to manipulate numbers to read numbers and to get and set variables.